Hello and welcome. Uh, thanks for attending this sem uh, this uh, webinar on my virtual child, teen and life today. Uh, I hope to get across as much information about this product as I can in about 20 minutes or so, as I know your time is valuable and you're very busy this time of year. So, my name is Michael Porteous. I'm a product manager for learning technologies at Pearson Australia. I've left everybody on mute today so I can move through this presentation quickly, but I do appreciate you're going to have questions that you want to ask along the way. So um, if you could please use the, um, the questions box, which you can see the image just there, to type any questions along the way, and uh, I'll leave some time at the end to answer those questions, and anything that I don't have time for to answer, we will uh, answer in a follow-up communication as well. So, what is my virtual child? In a nutshell, My Virtual Child is an interactive simulation that gives the user parenting choices they must make as the child ages. Uh, these choices then affect the development and personality of the child, along with the inherited traits that the child has. This allows the user to see the child grow and see the parenting decisions do or do not affect the personality of their child, along with random life events that are thrown in uh, that uh, change the course of the child's personality. So every virtual child encounters different challenges. So this is a really great tool and students really, really like it. So we wanted to also outline not just that it's a, a, you know, a, a fun tool, but that there's real benefits in, uh, in being able to, for students. So one big benefit is that the students get really attached to their child. So they care about the decisions they make for their child and as their uh, virtual parents. They have a continued use of the system because they care about this virtual child and they also care for the learning that they're receiving from this because they, are, they feel like they're a part of something. It's not just text on a screen or on a book. Uh, they're actually seeing something grow and develop. So it really does uh, be a very engaging experience for them. So engagement and enthusiasm is obviously uh, what this leads to. So because they care about so much that's going on, they become much more engaged with the course material. Uh, they usually attend class more. They're happier students. And there's also evidence that they get higher grades because of this. But obviously you want to know how this benefits you as well. It's great if the students are, uh, are learning and, uh, and they're having fun with it. But um, what are the benefits on the instructor end? So, as I mentioned, they'll really engage with the course content. They're not just going to flick over it and, and not view it again. They're going to see this as a part of the virtual child experience as well. So they're going to pay more attention to that course content. They're going to apply uh, the class material practically because they're going to see parallels of what you're teaching them with how their child is growing the decision that they're going to make. They're going to have enhanced critical thinking from this as well because there's rarely an obvious correct answer in my virtual child. Um, there are lots of different ways that you can react to situations and that will greatly influence how the child develops, but there's no exact wrong or right answers in many instances. So they've got to really think about why they're doing these things, not just choosing what they think is the best. You're also going to see visibility into student results. There is a grade book that tracks how they're doing and what progress they're making, the decisions that they're making as well. So you can look into that uh, to a great degree if you want to delve into how your students are doing. So let's look at what a student sees as they go through the system, starting with creating your child. So to begin with, um, you're given a choice of gender and your partner's gender. As you can see, you can have a same-sex couple if you want. It's very politically correct, this system. And it's going to take you through a path here where you can choose the appearance of the child, skin, eyes, hair, and so forth. So as you can see, they're going to be able to customise how their child is going to look. And this doesn't affect a huge amount of the choices, but it does engage the students and give them a sense of ownership of that child. Uh, then you're going to be able to choose a type of personality and all these tests are going to be closely resembling how the user was in the last couple of years of high school. 
So um, where they've reached that sort of developmental milestone, I guess, and, uh, and, and that's going to form uh, some inherited traits for the child as well. And then it's going to take through a personality quiz with uh, a range from, you know, whether it's much less or much more than others to particular questions. Uh, so this one says, my feelings got hurt, I was made fun or criticised, this was true of me, and then you say how much or little that affected you. So again, it's, it's and this is again at the age of 16, 17, 18. Uh, time. So this is again to give some inherited personality traits to the child which will be thrown into the random system and then affected by the choices that the student makes. There's also a cognitive quiz of the same, um, same genre where you're putting in you know, whether it's more or less than others on some cognitive type questions. So once you have done that, um, you've got a child it's set, it's got its inherited traits, and from then you can start raising that child. So this is what the student would see. They'd go in and see their child, obviously starting here as a newborn at zero months. And as you can see along the top, they've got um, <clears throat> different sort of milestones there, three months, eight months, 12 months, 15, and so forth, all the way up to the age of 18. And within each of these sections, you'll see a couple of different decision points along the way. Some of them they don't aren't required to uh, make a decision, like this one here. It's just giving some information about what's happened, and this will be a little bit different for every student. They're going to have slightly different births, slightly different uh, effects as it goes through. There are also some videos down the bottom, as you can see. So this one is a video on reflexes of a newborn baby. And as the um, child ages, there are more videos explaining different developmental milestones. This is an example of a decision point they've got to make. So it says here that the child, Mia, um, we want them to be active and curious about the environment. So the virtual parent can decide to either deck out the crib with the latest baby gear, black and white mobiles, rattles, get as much interesting stuff for them, or they can talk to and hold and interact with their uh, baby as much as they want. And, or they can give lots of audio stimulation, talking, singing, and listening to music. And none of these might be right or wrong, but they might certainly affect the development of that child. So just skip the head here to eight months. So you can see the picture then also changes as the child ages through to 18 as well, giving them a sense of progress. Um, this also is a point where they're doing an object permanence test. So different developmental milestones are often uh, shown here and uh, the child might will react well or badly to them. And it gives a bit of an idea about how well that child is doing. And some of these things can be influenced by the choices that parents make. So if they haven't been interacting with a lot of objects, perhaps they might do not do as well in this object permanent test at eight months. Here is another point where you're getting a report. This one here is a, uh, a paediatrician report. So again, this is a point where the system is actually giving feedback to the user explaining uh, how their child is doing. They can come in the form of doctors and paediatricians reports or school reports or daycare reports and so forth. So it gives an idea of how their child's developing, what they're doing well or poorly at and so forth. And that helps them in influence how they might want to then change their decisions as they go forward. And as I said, this goes up to 18 years in my virtual child. I'll talk more about uh, teen and life later. So, you can see what the students see. Let's take a look at the instructor back end of my virtual child. So, as an instructor, you can set up a class or multiple classes as well. So, you can have multiple groups or one big class, and students then get a class ID that they can go into to be a part of that class. And that just divides them up uh, so you can look at them in a more granular level if you want to. Or semester on semester, different courses, obviously. This is a snapshot of the things that you can see in the grade book. So when students uh, enrol and then start raising their child, you can see the name of the student, you can see the, uh, the age of the child where it's at, um, you can see the decisions, uh, how much complete uh, they are, and 
if they have reset the child or not. So you obviously want to see as they're going through, are they aging that child or not. So if you see most of your class is, uh, you know, getting close to 50, 67%, but there's some that aren't, that's a good way to quickly check in on them and say, are you working on my virtual child? There's also a really good instructor's manual that goes with this. Uh, it is a system that requires a bit of thought on how to integrate it within your class as well. So it's really interesting to have a read through this if you were looking to use it in your class. This is just the outline, the table of contents there as well. So you can see there's general instructions and overview going into a bit more detail than what I'm talking about. Foundations of intellectual and physical attributes, uh, the reflective questions and assignments. There's also suggested classroom activities, group activities, and how to use my virtual child as a basis for lectures. So there's a lot of help on how you can use this uh, particular product in your class and different types of classes, say lifespan development courses. There are also some um, student reactions to the programs and teaching tips from current users of my virtual child as well. So there's a lot of detail there if you want to delve into it. So that's my virtual child, which is the, the, the first one that was created. Then they decided to make one called my virtual team. Now, obviously, a lot of very important developmental stuff goes on in the teen years. So my virtual teen is exactly the same as my virtual child in how it looks and how it runs. But they've added a lot more content in on that those teenage years. So there are more decisions and more reports and more stuff going on. So if your course uh, focuses a lot on those teen years, then my virtual teen might be a better match for your class. My virtual life is another one. Now this is slightly different. It is my virtual child up until the age of 18 and then you've got a choice then to go on from the age of 18 further on or you can just start at the age of 18 and continue to live your life thereafter. It follows the same idea of decision points um, as you go along as we can see but they're going to be quite different and they're going to be based on the personality that was developed as a child. And as you can see here They've got a couple of different sections, late adolescence and emerging adult years, young adult years, middle adult years, and of course late adult years as well. So this can be really quite interesting, especially if you, you have courses on ageing and, and how that affects you as well. Um, it can be quite confronting to some students as well because of course they'll have to then be faced with their inevitable uh, death as well. But um, this can be quite challenging but quite rewarding as well. So one of the things we also want to stress here is that we don't just have a product here to suit your needs, but Pearson is all about supporting you as instructors and the students as well. So we really want to make sure that you do well with this and that you feel comfortable implementing this into your uh, subject. So on that end, what we have is a team of local people who can come out and talk to you and your teaching team and your administrative team to make sure that we integrate this and implement this into your uh, subject as well as possible, to make sure we're getting real learning outcomes and making it easy for you to use as well. We also have a 24-7 uh, website which allows you as instructors or students as well to go in and lodge any questions or queries you have with the technology in case something's going wrong or not quite working and they can either send emails or you can even live chat to somebody on the website and find out what you need. So, you know, we're all about always learning as our tagline is and we really want to make sure that we're helping you out with that. So, time for some questions. We have a few bit longer to deal with this. So type in any questions that you have. We've got a couple here which I'll respond to and anything I can't get to will follow up in a follow-up communication. So first one is, does this run on an iPad uh, or an iPhone, I assume, as well? At the moment, this system doesn't. It runs on Flash, which doesn't work on Apple devices. Um, Pearson realises, though, that uh, mobile technology is getting bigger uh, and is much more important. So we are committed to moving our technologies into more mobile-friendly environments. Um, but this is an ongoing process and as soon as something like that uh, happens for this product, we'll definitely let you know. And we've got here, how do students get access as well? Okay, so um, students get access in a couple of different ways. They can either access, they can either purchase an access code online through our websites or we can package a code with a textbook as well 
for students to uh, uh, to use. They buy the textbook, open the code, and they can register online for the system. Or we can um, sell it to the departments institutionally. So you can buy it on the student's behalf, and that will, of course, mean that every student will definitely have access to the system. Okay, any other questions? Looks like we don't have any more questions at the moment. So we will follow up with some more uh, detail and a follow-up communication, as I said. But thank you very much for spending the time today. I hope you've seen how this system could be a valuable addition to your teaching and how it can really help with the learning outcomes of your students. So thank you very much and have a great day.